Hello, and welcome to the Songwriters Workshop. This is the series where I attempt to write songs based on the process and techniques of famous songwriters. Each video looks at a different songwriter's writing habits, musical inspirations, and creative process, while also including an original song written using those techniques. So let's take a look at our next songwriter. This video will look at singer-songwriter Harry Nielsen. Harry started a songwriting career in LA in the early 1960s, working in a bank with some of the first computer systems during the day, and writing songs at night. Although he would release his first singles with Tower Records in 1966, and then his first album, Pandemonium Shadow Show, with RCA in 67, it wouldn't be until the Monkees recorded and released his song Cuddly Toy later that year that he would quit his bank job and focus on songwriting full-time. Harry's first album would find its way into the hands of Derek Taylor, press officer for the Beatles, and would eventually make its way to John and Paul. At a press conference in 1968, when asked who their favorite American group was, John and Paul both answered, Nielsen. Harry was soon on a flight to London to meet some of his biggest songwriting influences, and would begin a long friendship with the Beatles, in particular John Lennon and Ringo Starr, leading Derek Taylor to say, I always thought of him as the Beatle across the water, the American Beatle. Harry's second album, Aerial Ballet, would be released in 1968 and would feature what would become Harry's biggest hit, Everybody's Talkin', in part due to the fact that it would be featured in the Dustin Hoffman film Midnight Cowboy. Though Harry didn't write Everybody's Talkin', instead coming from folk songwriter Fred Neal. However, one song that Harry did write for Aerial Ballet is the song One, which would find even greater success with its cover by the band Three Dog Night. In fact, several of Harry's songs would find a wider audience in the hands of others, like the aforementioned Cuddly Toy, Here I Sit, which was recorded by the Ronettes, and Without Her, recorded by Glenn Campbell and Blood, Sweat, and Tears, to name a few. This may be due to the fact that Harry never performed for a live audience. Because of a disastrous performance earlier in his career while singing as part of a duo, Harry decided to stick only to the recording studio. After recording a few more albums, including a cover album of Randy Newman's songs and a soundtrack for an animated film, Harry would release what would be his biggest album, with Nilsson Schmilson in 1971. Tracks included Gotta Get Up, a cover of the Badfinger song Without You, and of course, Coconut. You put the peeps in the chili pot and eat them both up. You put the peeps in the chili pot and add the M&Ms. You put the peeps in the chili pot and makes it taste bad. Harry would continue to release albums for several years after, including one of American Standards and a record produced by John Lennon. However, due to his hard drinking and partying lifestyle, often leading to multi-day benders with the likes of John Lennon, Ringo Starr, Keith Moon, and other famous friends. Harry's smooth, lyrical voice would begin to fade. He would die of a heart attack at age 52. The research for this video will come from Harry's interview with Paul Zolo in his book, Songwriters on Songwriting, and the fantastic biography of Harry by Alan Shipton, entitled Nielsen, The Life of a Singer-Songwriter. Shipton's book goes through Harry's life, including excerpts from Harry's own unreleased autobiography, as well as an in-depth look at Harry's albums. It's a must-read for any Harry Nielsen fans. And although we won't be discussing it in this video, I would also highly recommend the documentary Who is Harry Nielsen and Why is Everyone Talking About Him? Let's get started. Going into my writing session, I knew I wanted to emulate the sort of tragic comic bend of a lot of Harry's songs. Harry is a master of using humor and theatrical music to portray painful or bittersweet subjects, even ones from his personal experience, as in his song 1941, which is about fathers abandoning their children, something Harry experienced. However, Harry would say his songs are not directly about his life, saying, Experiences are springboards to the imagination. Since everything you know is what you've experienced, my songs, in that sense, are a product of my experience. But they're not autobiographical. So in a sense, Harry writes about things that he can relate to, but aren't specifically about him. 
I think by approaching a subject in this manner, he is able to keep his dry, humorous outlook on them, while still writing songs that feel truthful. Harry is also known for writing songs very quickly, saying, Ideas come quickly, and as a matter of fact, the best song I've written I think was written in less than a minute. Many times you write the body of it, the main part, the idea, what it is that appeals to you of all the stuff to choose from, and then it will take time developing and expanding it and getting it correct. It is work. He says something similar to Paul, saying, the concept, if there is a concept, or the hook, is all you're concerned with. If you get the front line and a punch line, it's a question of just filling in the missing bits. So that is how I approached getting started on my song. To think about a subject that I could relate to but I knew that I could have fun with, which almost instantly led me to my thesis line and my final punchline. So I've talked about what my song is going to be about, but what about what it will sound like? Harry's melodies and music are at the same time memorable and incredibly unique to his voice. His advice on how to come about this music is this. When you listen to the radio, you find yourself singing along. A few weeks go by and you're humming a tune that you've forgotten the words to, because most people don't remember the words to anything, and so you make up your own words. Then you hear that record you've been humming six months later, and it turns out the melody was different too. So you find you've written a song. This is somewhat similar to what other artists like Jeff Tweedy talk about when writing music. That half-remembered tune that you adopt and morph into something of your own. You're not stealing the music from the other artist, because if you're like me, you're not talented enough to remember it exactly. He explains further to Paul, I think if you really want to get down to it, you have a file in your mind for every sound you ever heard. It happens so quickly it happens without you being aware of it, and that's why it seems like it's coming from a different place. It's actually coming from the same place every time. It's just a bunch of electricity and chemicals up there. But somehow, creative people's mindset is somewhere in creating something. It happens so quickly it seems like it's coming from somewhere else. It's not. It just means that you're in sync with yourself. And like many songwriters, including myself, who could never exactly remember a tune from day to day, Harry uses a recording technique to keep track of his ideas. Alan says in his book, Scott Turner encouraged Nielsen to use the songwriting method he adopted for most of the rest of his life, to sing and hum his efforts into a tape recorder. Thereby, nothing was lost, and he saved the time of actually writing the composition down. Like Harry, I finished my song rather quickly and in a single writing session. However, that was only half the battle, as next I had to tackle something that Harry often had help with arranging and recording a demo of my song. As Harry said in an interview, I play in all the keys and I know all the chords, so I play enough to write songs. I don't write enough to orchestrate songs, to effectively arrange them. I come up with just a sketch, and once that's done, I just have a vague concept of how it should be recorded. I have a sound in mind. The job is to get it across to George, and he will add the embellishments. The George Harry is referring to is George Tipton, his arranger for many of his early tracks, including the hit Everybody's Talkin'. While this channel is geared specifically towards songwriting, rather than producing or arranging, Harry's voice is so connected to the people he worked with, like George, and also producers like Rick Gerard, Richard Perry, and John Lennon, that it is important to take that into account when looking at his process. And speaking of his voice, one production element that typified Harry's style was the use of vocal overdubbing. He would record a vocal line, then the producer would play it back into Harry's headphones and he would sing the same, or sometimes slightly augmented or harmonized vocal line again, layering the recordings on top of each other to create a richer texture. Harry says of his overdubbing, The singing is all mine, but I do alter each background voice to make it sound fuller. If they're too much alike, it becomes a vocal double, and any differences have to be imperceptible. So I tried experimenting with this overdubbing technique in my song, along with trying my hand at arranging the instrument parts as best I could with what I had available to me. 
Like I said, this isn't a series about producing a track or arranging songs, but having a knowledge of that process and trying it out for yourself I think is a worthwhile skill for any songwriter. Over the next week, I arranged and recorded a demo of my song. Here's the result. I like living alone Don't have to answer the phone I just sit in my chair And let my hair grow long There is nothing to see But the walls and me I'm in on my own I like living alone. Da 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 So that was the song, and I think using Harry's process and trying to emulate his unique sense of style and demeanor led to an interesting product. But let me know in the comments if you have a way to improve or add on to the song. And check out both Paul Zolo's Songwriters on Songwriting and Alan Shipton's book, Nielsen. Both are great reads and worth your time. And thank you for watching. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future. I'll see you at the next song.